beautiful day for a ride. We're gonna get one of our probably final rips of the season in here. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and uh, hop on the Aprilia and get out there. So here we go, our first attempt moto vlogging from our Aprilia Tuono. And I will do this bike proper with like an actual uh, introduction video and uh, everything like that. But I kind of wanted to give you my first thoughts and impressions on the motorcycle uh, before we go ahead and get too far into that here. So as you guys may have seen in recent videos, I was looking at uh, trading in my Yamaha FZ1 for one of these here. And, um, you know, I couldn't really find anybody uh, locally that wanted to play ball. I had a lot of people interested in the bike saying that it was very clean and they wanted to come see it. Uh, but in the age of selling stuff online, everybody was very flaky and uh, they kept seeming like they wanted to bail on it. So I searched around dealers and I found this bike here at a dealer in Michigan. And uh, I just kind of got to talking with them, uh, shopped out some prices and things like that. And uh, we were able to make a deal work. So I picked up this brand new Aprilia Tuono uh, V4, uh, the base model, so to speak, in America. So you can see it's got the taller windscreen here. It's not the factory with the electronic suspension. Uh, but aside from that, they're very similar machines. Uh, but anyways, I traded in the Yamaha there, went out there to Michigan with a buddy, uh, picked this up, uh, trailered the old bike back or trailered the old bike up there and uh, trailered this one back. So that's kind of how that worked out there. And uh, this is the newest motorcycle I've ever owned in my life um, as far as like miles go. When I picked this up, it actually had zero miles on it. Not like half a mile, not one, two, three assembly miles, whatever. This thing was legitimately zero miles. So that was super funny and super interesting for me to see there. Um, but I'm just doing my 600 mile break in right now. So we're not gonna ride like too aggressively or too crazy or anything like that. They say to kind of keep the bike below like five, 6,000 RPMs for the first couple hundred miles. And then for the first, you know, 600 or so, uh, keep it below, you know, nine, 10 grand, do your brake and oil change, and then kind of ride it how you want it. Uh, you'll see that everyone kind of has their own uh, brake and procedures as far as what they follow. Uh, but I figured, you know, you don't want to baby it too much. And the worst thing you can do is just get on the highway and uh, cruise at the same RPM forever. So I've been doing a lot of like kind of back roads riding, like what you're seeing here, trying to shift a lot, here are my RPMs. And holy cow, let me tell you the neatest thing about this bike by far, and I've never owned a motorcycle with this, is the uh, clutchless uh, quick shifter up and down. It is so cool to just be able to kick through the gears and, uh, you know, be exactly where you want to be and the bike just kind of figures it out. It makes spirited riding so much fun to just be able to like, boom, drop it a gear. And you can just rip through it with no problem or concern. And it's always, you know, a smooth shift. One of the things that I was saying that's most addictive about this bike is that quick shifter. You've got the uh, the up down quick shifter where you can just kind of slam it around, put it exactly where you need it, and you get a perfect rev match shift every single time. Uh, one of the things I was reading about the Aprilia is that this is one of the uh, smoothest uh, up down quick shifters in the business. I've ridden other Yamahas uh, that have it, like the MT-09 SP and the uh, MT-10, um, and those are a little bit more kind of herky jerky, and unless you're kind of really giving the bike the uh, the full beans there. It doesn't like to uh, kind of respond to that quick shift. So you can see with this bike here, with not even giving it the full beans, it's still, you know, with light throttle and shifting early, it still responds very, very well to the quick shifter, uh, which keeps this bike really fun and exciting, especially during, you know, kind of just more of a relaxed uh, riding environment. But uh, as I was uh, telling some friends kind of uh, in private here, the neatest thing about this bike to me is just how good it is. Now I know it's so vague and generic to say a bike feels good or it handles well or it's amazing or whatever, but like I, I had a feeling that my 2009 FZ1 was a uh, pretty well set up motorcycle. And uh, let me tell you, compared to modern technology and electronics, it doesn't matter how well set up that Yamaha was. Like with the you know modern technology and the IMU and everything that this bike has, oh we got some farming going on here. Heck yeah. 
Uh, with the modern technology and the IMU and everything that this bike has here, it just makes everything that much better. The suspension on this thing is uh, crazy compliant. So like the bike wants to lean very, very eagerly and uh, it's not bad over bumps. The throttle sense is electronic. You can adjust it through all the different modes here. Again, I'm not gonna go into like a full on review of like all the different modes and what they do. You know, there's auto or there's um, there's motorcycle journalists out there, you know, if you're looking to kind of get all that information about it. And I can kind of do a more in-depth deep dive if that's something you're wanting to see in the future. Um, but it it's boggled me, you know, that was like one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to get rid of the Yamaha. Because like, I just wanted to ride something that was a little bit more, uh, you know, from this century. So like going from pretty much the no tech of that bike to literally all of the tech that this has. I mean, a lot of like hyper nakeds or naked bikes don't have IMUs or anything like that. And to gain all that is just a big plus for me because it makes the riding experience that much more fun. Like, I, I don't want to say that I'm ham fisting the bike in first and second gear all the time because I'm, I'm still breaking it and I'm not. But to be able to know that, hey, if I apply a little too much throttle coming out of a corner or something like that, that the bike and all of its electronics will recognize that and, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, prevent me from killing myself, which is just a really nice thing to have, you know, especially when you've got a bike at this power level. Let me ri remind you that that Yamaha FZ1 that I just recently got rid of was a 2009, had about 150 horsepower, but didn't have traction control, ABS, or any of that. So like, my, me and my one friend, we always say that ABS and traction control is such a, such a nice thing to have, even if it only saves you once, it's already worth its weight in gold because all it takes is one panic break to literally have a real bad day. So if you've got, you know, ABS and uh, you go to lock your stuff up and the bike kind of figures it out for you there, it's already worth its weight in gold. I don't know, this quick shifter is absolutely so much fun. Like, I wanna quick shift through every gear when I possibly can. <laughs> and again, like one of the things is, I'm not winding it out too high, but I'm hoping you can kind of hear through the mic here, just uh, the exhaust, how you kind of get that butterfly valve that opens around 5,500, 6,000. It's glorious, it's truly glorious. <laughs> So with that being said, I want to finish the break-in, I want to do the fluids change on it, and then I want to look into doing an exhaust and a different tune on it. Uh, as of right now, since this is the 2021, there are some differences on the motorcycle, so all the tuning options that were there before from like the 17 to 20 models are a little bit different on this. Um, they're not exactly a uh, perfect fit for it. Uh, there's some code changing that needs to happen and things like that. So right now you've got the easy option is the Aprilia Race ECU. Uh, but I want to kind of wait to see what some of the aftermarket options open up here for like do at home, uh, do it yourself flash options. Because I think it'd be cool to kind of uh, do that rather than having to swap an ECU, worry about a recalibration and all that. Where you can just flash your own ECU, you get all the same goodies and maybe an even more customized tune. Being that this bike is a V4, I absolutely want to open up this exhaust here at Scream and here at Sing. Because because just from the mutedness that I can hear, this thing already has an absolutely incredible noise to it. And uh, we, we really need to hear some more of that. But yeah, first impressions, man, I absolutely love this thing. The modern tech is real nice. This screen is awesome. Like I've never had a bike with an actual like color screen like this. I've always had just, you know, little LCDs. So having something like this, that's a little bit more modern, shows my info in a more uh, easily digestible way. You know, it's configurable. You've got all the different information in here. It's again, it's like, you can't really compare the two because it's a bike that's, I mean, heck, you know, I think the second gen FZ1 came out in 06. I mean, they're 15, almost 20 years apart now. So you've got those differences with it, but still, oh. It's just like, to be able to clutchlessly shift through the gears, I was always envious of my good friend Dave that's got the MT-10 that you may have seen in other videos that can rip past me and you get that clutchless just blah, blah, blah. And to uh, be able to do it in here, oh, killer man. Can't even explain to you how awesome and fun that is. I want to open it up to you guys. You know, like I said, I've got about 440 miles on it right now. Uh, we're beginning to break the bike in, uh, you know, varying the revs a lot, varying the speed, varying the gears. You know, we're getting all that done. We're gonna hit the 600 miles. We're gonna do the first service ourselves. torque check all the bolts that need to be checked, uh, do the oil change, and uh, I'm gonna let it rip. There's a lot of debate on how to break these bikes in. A lot of people say just let it eat from mile one, and uh, I don't know if I believe fully in that. I think there should be kind of a softer break-in. I'm not saying 
you know, love the bike and keep it below 5k forever. As you can see here, we're definitely, we're getting it a little bit, but like, I'm, I'm not, I still haven't gone over 10,000 RPM on the bike. Um, just because, you know, it's one of the things they recommend not to do it. I get it, the bike's got a factory warranty for two years, unlimited miles. I hope I never have to use that. But again, if I can minimize my chances of having to take it to the dealer, it would be cool. So that's kind of where we are. Uh, you can see here, we're just doing a lot of, um, needless shifting and everything like that. It looks like we got a roundabout here. Let's see if we can uh, rip a doodle our way into this roundabout. Oh, okay, so being a V4, this bike definitely uh, gets pretty toasty in traffic. So our temps right now are nice and cool. We're about 176 degrees, but uh, yesterday wasn't even that warm out. It was maybe like 70 degrees. Uh, we were sitting around and I saw temps of like 223. I get it. Uh, you know, these bikes do not like stop and go traffic. They do not like slow speeds. It's just really funny to see that. I'm sure with a tune where you can kick the fans on earlier, it'll be a little bit better. Uh, but just as it sits right now, she is a toasty girl. And it ain't even summertime, man. Oh, this guy is, uh, woo, a real dummy. We're doing 12 miles an hour through a roundabout here. Wanted to go around and, you know, really lean this bike. So far, this comes with the... Uh, Pirelli Rosa Corsa three tire, something along the lines of that. And uh, it's been a pretty decent tire so far. We're just trying to slowly uh, scrub it in and get more towards the uh, edges of it there. But, oh, this guy's miserable. We're not even doing the speed limit. So I'll open this up to kind of comments, you know, uh, like I said, I was pretty serious about doing this. Italian motorcycles are what got me into riding, so I did always want my uh, own Italian motorcycle. I really, really like Ducatis, uh, but in the form of like a hyper naked bike, all they really have is a Street Fighter. And uh, you could ask anybody, that's not really the most uh, type of riding friendly bike that I do. Like uh, I rode this, you know, pretty much all day, uh, Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Uh, so you can see we got, you know, 400 miles on it. So, you know, 200 mile days, both days. And I just don't see myself doing that comfortably or easily on something like a Street Fighter. So this bike's a little bit better at that. Um, the wind protection helps a lot. Uh, the cruise control, haven't really been able to play with it much. I confirmed two times that it does work, uh, but I haven't been able to use it much just because, again, I'm trying to vary those RPMs. So, you know, just a quick shift in a second and just a four up. It's so good. Yeah, you need to experience that if you haven't already. You know, go uh, put a quick shifter on your bike or uh, ride a bike with a quick shifter because holy cow, you do not know what you are missing. That is so much fun. I love the look of the front of this bike too. Uh, as far as I know, this is the only bike I've seen in America that actually has dedicated DRLs where it's not running, you know, your uh, front turn signals, at, you know, on all the time or where it's not running the low beam. Uh, this bike has an automatic headlight sensor, which is really neat. So you can see the screen invert to nighttime when you ride through a tunnel or it becomes dark. Uh, but just during the daylight, it's got a uh, daytime running light and then it flips to the uh, low beam headlights uh, when the bike feels fit. Very, very neat. Uh, I think that's cool. I'd love to see that on more bikes because I think it really helps with the overall uh, look and aesthetic of the bike as you're rolling down the road there. Okay, we got another roundabout coming up here, so uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, like I said, I've always wanted one of these. I wanted an Italian bike. I wanted an Italian hyper naked bike. And this, I feel, is going to fit the bill for me. The V4 that they've used in this, it's been in production for quite some time. They've used it in the RSV4. They've used it in the Tuono. Uh, really, the only major change with this here is the Euro 5 emissions, and the exhaust is even quieter. So that's just another reason we want to open it up here. Um, and yeah, we'll kind of see uh, what it sounds like over time here. Hopefully, I can get a pipe on before the winter. This guy's a freaking idiot. Holy moly, dude. Get the boy. All things considered, that's going to uh, pretty much wrap it up for this video here. Uh, so far, you know, 400 miles in, we're really loving, uh, really enjoying this motorcycle, and uh, I can't wait to see how it is uh, with a little bit more long-term usage. As far as modifications go, that's coming. Uh, like I said, I'd like to do um, the, obviously a uh, ECU flash and a uh, different exhaust pipe on it. Uh, but I'm going to do some other kind of protective stuff here, like a radiator guard and an oil cooler guard. Maybe some bar end mirrors. Uh, we'll do the integrated signals in the front headlights, so that way we got that versus the floppy uh, pumpkins hanging off the side here. And a tail tidy, obviously. You know, every single motorcycle needs a tail tidy. This thing's got some heinous uh, fender just flipping off the side there, so we'll need to eliminate that. This is 
no left turns there, but I see a guy going right down this road. Got some cool tower I've always wanted to see here. I don't really know what that's all about, but uh, cool. Looks like some ice cream cones hanging off the side there. Never been down this road before. I've uh, always just kind of wanted to ride around back here and uh, see what's up. So here we are, checking it out. Got a, uh, I don't even know, man. Wow, that mailbox looks like a friggin' speed camera. That was terrifying. That's the coolest thing about the quick shifters, being able to drop multiple gears quickly without the clutch. You just kick it down and you're good. Oh, I don't think that noise will ever get old. I'm like pretty sure that the noise this motorcycle makes will always remain uh, as addicting as it is. Like, that was the biggest thing that I wanted out of a bike because I didn't want another inline four. So, you know, there's V4s or there's even, you know, the V-twin and the Super Duke. And uh, th that's what I was after. I was just after something different that I haven't had before. Seriously considered the S1000 uh, single R, uh, but upon further research, holy cow, does that bike get expensive when you start to option it up with the desirable stuff. Uh, so we landed on this. You know, I got my little uh, Italian piece of spaghetti here, and uh, we're gonna be documenting uh, how this bike is for me over time. Uh, so, without any further thoughts or words or comments, uh, I'm going to close this one out here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, like I said, I will be hitting you guys with more of an official kind of unveil of the bike. Uh, but while the weather was still nice, I definitely wanted to like get out here and ride it and document my uh, initial thoughts and impressions of this little 2-Ono. So, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for checking this one out.